Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. Yeah, back to good video now. I got the laptop is back, so I can film with the good camera not to worry about spending five hours uploading a video. Oh, it feels so good. What we got here? This from Aerosol. This is issue number one. Cat and Mouse. Now, back in the 80s, during the black and white indie comic boom, there was piles of comics based around ninjas. And a good part of that is because, you know, um, old Frank Miller, you know, Frank Miller made ninjas hot as hell, you know, Ronan and uh, Daredevil, you know, Vector was kind of a ninja, you had the hand, Ninja Turtles became big, so there's a lot of ninja comics out there, a lot of them. And this is one that just stood out to me, and for a couple of reasons. First reason, it's set in New Orleans. I grew up about, <sighs> I grew up on the Mississippi-Alabama line, and honestly... I could make it to New Orleans where I grew up in about an hour and 20 minutes. I mean, that's pushing it. That's out on, you know, I-10 doing that, you know, 70, 80 the whole way. Back when I had my Olds, man, that Olds Delta 80. Oh, I had an Oldsmobile. 84 Oldsmobile Delta 88. Had a 350 underneath the hood. Not a 305, a 350. I got that car up to 125 a couple of different times. I'm sure it could go faster. So, well, I, I didn't, I never even heard of this comic. Back in the day, when I first moved back to Mississippi, the area I live in, there just was no high-speed internet at all. You could get satellite, and it was like, oh, we'll give you five gigs for 80 bucks a month. Yo, eat my, eat my ass. I'm not paying that. So I had dial-up internet. So instead of spending all my, a lot of my time online reading shit and doing research and doing videos, I read a lot of comments. I read a lot. Because, you know, it don't matter. And especially... Back then, before they got a lot of the power issues out there, power would go out about once a month. Well, power would go out, sit there and read. So I'd go on eBay, you know, 10-pound lot, random assorted comics, no duplicates, you know, 20 bucks plus shipping. Yeah, sign me up. Well, in there, I got a stack of cat and mouse. Not this issue you're seeing, but the one, some of the ones underneath it. I'm like, ooh. I started flipping through, and I started recognizing some names. Besides of being in New Orleans, which yeah, connects me, I know New Orleans fairly well. Not as well now. I have not been down, going down to New Orleans as regular as I used to back in the day. It used to be, I mean, hell, back in high school, at least once every six weeks, we'd just be like, hey, we ain't going to school today. My buddy would pick me up. You know, we haul ass in New Orleans. Because, I mean, can't do shit now. It's way past. Back in the day, <laughs> before it became this became well known, if you had facial hair, and appeared to at least be 16 to 18, they'd serve you in New Orleans. And y'all have seen pictures of me. I had, there's a picture of me floating around online. It is my seventh grade picture. I have a full mustache and a goatee going. I look like a grown man when I was 12. So, yeah, I could drink back then. So, all right, cat mouse. Ninja team, cat mouse. Let's see here. But the other reason this appealed to me so much, you know what, I'm going to pull these other ones to the side for a minute, is because the artist, Mitch Bird. Now, I know Mitch through a mutual friend. And Stephen Butler worked on this too. A uh, friend of mine, Dean, who I've known for quite a long time, he is a good friend of mine's uncle. And actually, me and Dean are more in touch with each other than me and the friend are anymore. He introduced me to Stephen. He introduced me to Mitch Bird. And I got to know both these artists. And it's like, cool, Mitch is based in Biloxi. Steven, I don't think, is based in Biloxi or the coast. I think he's up towards Hattiesburg. So I got, like, a handful of issues, really enjoyed it. Well, this issue right here, and I'm going to take this out of the bag. This is the only one that's bagged and boarded, and you'll see why for a second. Well, quite a few years ago, on Free Comic Book Day, I was at this great comic shop, Five Alarm Comics in Yarborough, Mississippi, and I got Mitch Bird to sign this. The guy was smart. He went through his back issue bins and pulled out a bunch of stuff for all the different artists. He had Mitch Bird, he had Stephen Butler, Kimberly the other artist. Pulled all stuff out of the cheap bins. Because the way his comics were was, if it's in the back issue bins, it's not bad in the border, it's a buck an issue. If you buy a bunch, I'll cut you a deal. You know, you buy 20, 30 comics, okay, they're 75 cents. You buy 50, okay, they're 50 cents. You know, deals like that. So he grabbed a bunch of this stuff out and put it up there. So people get stuff to sign. It's not, oh, Mitch is like, man, I'm sorry to art this hard. Like, no, I actually really enjoy it. So let's get this opened up here. Yeah. Stephen Butler does the inks, the letters, and he's a plotter. Roland Mann 
is the writer and plotter. Mitch Bird's pencil and plotter. Stephen Butler's inker, letterer, and plotter. Paul Glacey does the cover. I knew that wasn't Mitch's bar. But just a great little, I mean, nothing amazing. I mean, it's just really good art, a really cool little comic. And over the years, I've been slowly trying to collect a full run of this. I'm missing a few issues here and there. And I'm probably going to my next or big online comic order because I don't see these in comic shops hardly anymore because this came out on 1990. Wow. Later than I thought. I was like, this is an 80s thing. This is a 90s thing. Okay. Uh, you just don't see them that much. I mean, in fact, one issue in here I did pick up recently and I was shocked. And when I bought it, the Origins of Cat and Mouse. I like this. Cat and Mouse were born in early 87. They were created by Mitch while him and Steven were doing five to six page stories to submit to various publishers and samples of their work. A five page short was finished by May and forgotten. In October 87, I was helping my fiance, then my girlfriend, campaign for the homecoming court at the University of Southern Mississippi, which she and I were students. My job was to escort her and a handful of other girls to the male dorms to make their campaign speeches. And that's where I ended up meeting Mitch and them. The Jackaroo. Now this one is okay. This this is, is I want to. There was an issue published by a different company besides Aerosol before this. I don't have that one. This is from that. But uh, Stephen only does the inks on pages one through four and six, and Hope Shoemate does the rest. Just really well done. And notice that's not exact size. You know, it's got a little border. Yeah, you kind of. All the stuff you see with early, you know, first stuff from, you know, independent creators. Oh, wow. Fucking Simidar. Anybody remember Simidar? Probably not. Okay, so that's the first issue. That's really cool. Well, that was not the first one I got. Like I said, you know, I picked that one out. I took that I'm a Mitch Bird, and I'm going to get Stephen Butler signed. And probably, I'll have to get in touch with Roman. I have to get Roman Hands, Mississippi. All right. Rolling Man Mitch Bird, The Lady Warbot. This is issue three from Air Cell. Now, these were two, tw wow, 225, man, wow. And by this time, Stephen Butler did the cover illustration and cover coloring. And nobody's listed on ink, so I guess Mitch did them. And that's, and Stephen Butler is best known. He did a lot of work on Sonic from Archie. He does a lot of Christian comics. Really talented artist. He just never, and kind of like in Mississippi's best known. Oh, he did Silver Sable. Matter of fact, one of the local comic shops for the longest time had a copy of Silver Sable number one sitting in their glass case signed by Steve Butler wanting 30 bucks. Until I came in there when I was like, oh, that's cool. You want 10 more? Well, and I was like, I got 10 of them sitting at the house. I mean, Stephen, I mean, even now, they, especially superhero readers, they don't know who Stephen Butler is. And it ain't like it was hard to get a hold of any help. Stephen, uh, when I got that cat and mouse number one sign, Stephen was there. Kind of neat watching you, Mitch's art progress, and a lot of people don't even really know who Mitch Bird is. Go look him up. Really good artist. Beware the vampires kiss. And Air Cell's kind of known for, you know, I mean, you got the Barry Blair stink all over, which sucks. And then after he was kind of gone, it's when it became, you know, the um, porn company, basically. It was up, ended up being owned by Air Cell, I mean, um, Malibu. And boom, you know, it became the Parker because Malibu had Air Adventure, Air Cell, Eternity, Malibu. Just, you know, really well for the time, really fun, well done. You know, ninja shit. Lumberton, Mississippi, Jeremy Reed. Well, oh, that's nice. Silver something. And then I got issue number four. I like this cover. Mitch did this cover. I could tell by looking at it. Okay. Mitch is a penciler, Roland's a writer, Ronald Paris is the inker. Stephen But it says Stephen Butler cover illustration, but it says it's got an MB. I mean, you can see it, so I don't know. Tom Mason, who of course was involved with uh Malibu. And just you know, Captain Harlock, White Devil. You know, just a fun, like I said, nobody remembers. Cat and Mouse? Yeah, that's issue four. Issue five. Yeah, just a fun little ninja. Yeah. This is something, you know, that's one thing I always I always talk about in these videos is you know, go to your comic shop. 
even if you don't like Monarch, go dig in the back issue bins. Go dig in the cheap bins. And, you know, help the comic shops out because they're the only way you can really get comics nowadays and they're hurt. They're hurt. Back. I am shocked. I am 100% shocked that the comic shop in town is going to stay open with everything going on. They were closed for quite a while because of the pandemic. And honestly, it's not even really a comic. It's a card shop that happens to carry comics. I'm one of the few I ever see digging through the comics. And we have none. This has got... Okay, Mitch did the cover on this one. That's Demon. And Demon got his own little spinoff series. After this, and there's like a two or three issue Demon spinoff series. Ape City. Planet, yeah, they got the Planet of the Apes license adventure, didn't they? Did a lot of those. You know, nothing. And this is one where there is a trade. But it's only like the first four issues, and it's really hard to come by. Oh, man. I so... I, Thought about it multiple times, looked into it, want to start Alien Nation. Nice. Start on my own comic company, and my whole thing would be putting down trades, a lot of this stuff. So you ain't got to dig out all the, go dig the issues, you know, go dig them out of the cheatings. Okay, what was that? That was what? Five. This is issue six. We got Stephen Butler's the art director on this one. Okay. And what I noticed is that the art looks way different in this one. You got John Drudry doing the ink, so that might be why. Yeah. I wonder, you know, what if this would be what uh, the guys at Cartoons KV consider outlaw comics? A lot of black ink. Not It's not uber violent. And there's not a lot. I don't remember there being any nudity. Matter of fact, honestly, maybe besides some language. These are stuff I, I could easily see handing like a kid. You know, 10 or older, and 9, 10, corner. How the kid is, how the parents are. I mean, I would let my kid read this at nine, but I'm also the parent that would be like, hey, you're five. You're old enough to go see Tech Chase on Ask the original one. Come on. Let's go see this. You know, hey, you're eight now. Time to see Last House on the Left. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Just really fun books. Cat Claw. Is that? Oh, it's, okay, never mind. I thought, that looks like the character that uh, Mike Grell created. Issues. Issues. This is issue seven. See, I kind of... I like this cover. Um, Floyd Robinson Jr. does the ink. You can see by this time, Stephen ain't doing... Oh, he's still the art director, but... Yeah. I wonder how Stephen felt <laughs> when Aerosol became, you know, a porn company. Because Stephen's a fairly religious guy. I don't know about Mitch. I don't think Mitch is... Or if he is, he doesn't have anything, he don't have any issues with nudity. Because I've seen some Mitch sketches like, wow, dude. Mitch is one of those guys I'm really shocked didn't get a gig at uh, Penthouse Comics when they were doing that. Because there's some really, that's not, man, nobody ever talks about Penthouse Comics. There's some great stuff in there. It wasn't just all porn. It was like some really good stuff. And they paid really fucking well everything I've ever heard. That looks kind of janky right there. This going to be a long one. All right, tell. So, that's number seven. Oh, God. The Trouble with Girls. Good comic that we'll probably never see reprinted because Gerard Jones has something to do with it. If you don't know why, and I'm saying Gerard Jones, go look it up because, man, it's just one of those things where it's like, geez, you know. He got in trouble for... I think it was child pornography, if I remember right. But, you know, just shit like that. It, it, it's odd, man. I, mean, I just saw recently, like, another comic artist caught the same shit. You know, so, I don't know. I really don't know anymore, man. There's so much crazy shit going on in the comic industry. And, you know, I'm a huge comic. I always have been. I've been reading comics. You know, like I said, you know, comics are how I... Honestly, comics are how I learned how to read. You know, I wanted to read. You know, I saw these comics that are all over, but I wanted to read them, so I started reading them. Okay, what's the next one we got here? We got number eight. This cover, I don't know, the faces look a little weird on this one. Who did this cover? Mitch did it, okay. But you can see his art's progressing a lot. I mean, it's gotten a lot better since that very first issue. 
from the darkness. Just a lot of many really cool comics. They said nobody's talking about and you know. There's so much of this out there. That's one thing I you know, I'll, I'll did this channel for when I do comics. I want to spotlight these comics that nobody's ever talking about anymore. And sometimes, yeah, the art's a little janky, but the story's good. Perfect example, the protectors from Malibu. You know, it doesn't get talked about because it was basically Malibu going, oh shit, we're losing image. We need something. They took a bunch of golden age years and revamped them, and it was great. Art was a little janky. Covers were usually cool, the inside art was a little janky. Story was great. And then, you know, they started up the Ultraverse and just said, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. The protectors. And now, you know, there's no trade. You know, you can find 90% of the issues extremely cheap besides that very last one. That last one, ooh, damn. Jim Ballon, holy shit. Yeah, how can tell us, Jim Ballon? Okay, that was eight, this is number nine. Look at that, man. I saw it, I was like, ooh, is Foul showing up? <laughs> no, Foul stays showing up. It would be cool if he did. Yeah. And just, you know, just such a really well done series. And I want to say there's like 14 or 16 issues. I don't have, I'm missing a few here and there, as you see. Okay. The Puppet Master comics, those are actually going up in price now that people are looking for them. Dead Walkers. This is issue 11, and I want to say issue 11 and 12 I just found recently. I know I found one of these just recently at Comic Commander. So, you're in the greater Jackson Harrison Ridgeland. You want a good comic shop? This is, now, it's a small shop. The owner is great. Everybody who works there is really cool. I've had a couple of good conversations with the owner. I think we bonded over both old. <laughs> and like, we read, you know, we were reading back in the 70s. But, um, I found him there, and, you know, he was like, oh. I forgot about this series. Now we still got Mitch. We got Ken Branch doing the ink. Stephen Butler star. You know, just each issue you see, you know, Mitch's art really improving. Urchok's Folly. No idea. Oh, it's a Planet of the Apes miniseries. Okay. Cat Claw. Yeah. Retief and the Warlords. I see a lot about this, but I have no idea what it is. Next issue, Someone Dies. Cat Mouse number 12. Be here. I'm fixing to find out who. Merlin. R.A. Jones, Rob Davis, Bruce McCorkendale. Okay. And the last one I have. And you know what? While that cover's on there, just look at that cover. I'm going to look this up. I'm going to see any issues this ring. I'm going to look up. You know, check it on the best, the absolute best online comic shop to me. The one I use the most. My comic shop. I love my comic shop. They are just great, great, great. You look it up. Cat and Mouse. There's oh, Silver Line in the first issue. And there is, according to this, 18 issues. Okay. And they have. All but the 18th. That one's going to be a bitch to find. Usually, that's one thing with comics. Usually, that very last issue to run a motherfucker to find. Look at this cover, man. I wonder who's dying in this one. So, that that's not old uh, Faust. Well, this issue makes a year's worth of cat and mouse. We tried to give you a crash boom ending to this tooth and nail storyline. Okay, it's in the tooth. Oh, look. It's set during Mardi Gras, man. Oh, man. I miss Mardi Gras. They try to do Mardi Gras up here. Oh, man, that's the thing. I'm going to talk about that for a second. You know, I've been to Mardi Gras outside of the actual region. A lot of people know this Mardi Gras started in Mobile, Alabama. Been to Mardi Gras in Mobile. Been to Mardi Gras in Pasco, Mississippi, Moss Point, Pasco Shan, Biloxi, New Orleans, Port Arthur, and where I live now. And honestly, Mobile to New Orleans, that area does it good. You get outside, it's like, like, the one in Port Arthur, it was like a street fair with a damn parade going. You know, you had to pay to get in. And it was not good. Carmella. Ooh. Ape Nation with a crossover alien nation and Planet of the Apes. Who's going to die? Who's going to die? Uh, 
Oh, cat is on a coma. That's how it ends. Okay, so nobody died, really. They lied to us. There's that eight nation cover. So, you know, there's no cat and mouse. Let's look at all that. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. I mean, if you did, give me that thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye bye.